Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. Today we have another fantastic episode. Uh, Chris Grant joins us, who has his hands in a ton of different spaces, as we'll get into probably too many that I could even go ahead and mention um, in the intro. In the intro, but he's been selling on Amazon for over ten years. Uh, some software, different types of info products, and also an Amazon business. So thanks for joining us, Chris. Yeah, thanks for having me, fellas. I appreciate you. Absolutely. And so like we were talking about prior, I'm sure the Amazon space has evolved through the years that you've been in it. But take us back to the beginning and how you actually went ahead and got into Amazon, uh, geez, like 10 years ago, like you had mentioned. Oh, sure, sure. So I'll try to keep it a little short because the, the story is a little long, but I was uh, I've been self-employed since I was uh, 18 years old. I started selling insurance in our family business, and uh, and then I wanted to figure out a way to kind of get out of the the whole selling face-to-face thing and and make some money online, uh, so that I could step away and and like be a stay-at-home dad. Uh, and so I wanted to figure some things out. So I got into drop shipping on eBay. Is kind of how I got my my feet wet. Uh, and then I came across Chris Green and I learned about retail arbitrage and online arbitrage and the power of Amazon FBA. Uh, and so I was like, you know what, let's give this a shot uh, because it sounds a lot better than staying up till three, four in the morning, fulfilling all of these uh, drop shipping orders. Uh, so we gave it a shot. I bought some stuff and this was the Wild West, guys. So I bought some things uh, from a garage sale. They were... Uh, they were vintage Playboy magazines and <laughs> I, I put them up for sale on Amazon and sure enough, within a week or so, one of them sells and I ship it out. Everything goes really well and another one sells. And so now I'm hooked and I'm like, all right, well, I can send all this stuff into Amazon. I don't have to store it here in my little apartment. So I start sending things into Amazon and buying board games and uh, clearance stuff from uh, Meyer, if anybody's from the Midwest or Target and all these places. Uh, and then just kind of grew from there. But at the same time, like you guys, I, I, I've always liked to kind of document what's going on and, and teach people what I'm learning. And so once we kind of transitioned from retail arbitrage to online arbitrage, I really started saying, you know what, everything I learn, I'm going to put up on YouTube so that someone else can kind of pick up something here or there and hopefully make a few dollars as well. Uh, and then that kind of became my, my passion. Uh, and so, you know, we don't necessarily have the biggest Amazon business. We're not multi-million dollar sellers, uh, but we're able to, uh, we're able to have a business big enough that, you know, supports our lifestyle. And then I can go and kind of chase all these other things because I've got entrepreneurial ADD, uh, which I would imagine you guys may have as well. Uh, you know, but I want to be able to teach and I want to be able to you know, learn new things all the time. And so it's been, uh, it's been a really good journey. That's awesome. Yeah. And I think you so, mentioned it, but where did you initially find out about Amazon FBA? Cause this is again, this, this is like 2011, 2012, right? Yeah. The, I, yeah, people I call posting the, on Instagram back then. No, no, absolutely not. I, I call him the OG, uh, but Chris green, Uh, you know, he wrote, he wrote a book called retail arbitrage and he wrote, you know, the Bible of online arbitrage called online arbitrage. Uh, and he's a good friend of mine now. Uh, but he was, he was really the only one with a Facebook group back then. It was called scan power. And, uh, you know, I had learned everything in there. Heck guys, back in the day, I even, I offered, I was like, Hey, listen, uh, I'm so willing to learn this. Like I'll come work for you in your warehouse. I'll, I'll scrub toilets, whatever it you know, needs to be so that I can learn what you guys are doing. Uh, unfortunately, nobody ever took me up on that. Uh, but that's how hungry I was to kind of figure out this game, you know, back then. Awesome. So what other sort of pieces of the pie do you have? You said, uh, Miles kind of mentioned in the intro, you have some, some parts and some different softwares. What landscape are you occupying in the Amazon space? Yeah, so... Um, we, uh, the first extension I built for the Amazon space is called Rev ROI, uh, which for people who do OA, if you want to find gift cards and discount cash or sorry, cash back and discount gift cards, Rev ROI does that all for you kind of in one place. You don't have to go to 
three or four different websites to figure out who has the best, uh, you know, way to kind of build your ROI. Uh, and then I'm co-creator of the extension called IP Alert, uh, which tries to help you, you know, stay protected from brands that file IP claims. Uh, and then I'm also co-creator of the OA Challenge, which is, um, you know, how we, we teach other sellers to do online arbitrage and stuff like that. Yeah. So I like the way you're involved in a bunch of different stuff. Cause like you said, like, yes, entrepreneurial ADD, like I'm kind of the same way. I see myself as a marketer at heart. You know what I mean? And it sounds like you have a lot of that similar stuff with all the other stuff you got going on where you realized a lot of other people are interested in learning this stuff too. I can, you know, by putting out content, you can really leverage out and affect a lot of different things, which then can multiply your income and just diversity like that in general. And I, I mean, I could talk about the marketing stuff all day, but it's really cool. To oh yeah. On into all these different ways. Um, at what point did you realize you could do Amazon full-time? Cause that's something that a lot of our audience, you know, strives to do early, or at least some of them. And yeah. like, we all have that moment when it clicked. I'd love to hear yours. Yeah. Uh, you know, I really, after I sold that very first item, I knew that, the foundation of something that could become a full-time business was there, but it probably took me about three years before I actually took the jump. Uh, and you know, I was working an office job. I was selling insurance. We were doing all right. It was, I was, I was good at selling insurance. Uh, you know, but there came a point when I was like, you know, I either am going to have to stay in this family business for the rest of my life, or I've got to go and plant my own flag. Uh, and so, January 1st of, I want to say 2015 or 2014, I always lose track of the dates. My wife will be able to tell you. Uh, but January 1st, I was like, you know what, this is it. We're going to take the leap. Uh, I had six months of residual commissions coming in to pay me. Uh, and I was like, we're going to give this a six month go. And if I can't replace our income, then I'll go and I'll get another job, whether it's being the manager of a grocery store or whatever it is. Uh, but you know, we did it, worked my tail off and, uh, you know, ended up beating what I was making, selling an insurance, selling on Amazon. Yeah. And I'm sure at this point, many, many times over, over the years and everything yeah. like that, I, th I think the big takeaway is that you were doing it for a few years. You know what I mean? Like very few people can commit to even anything for a few months. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. From a side hustle perspective, because like it, making money, significant money in any way is hard. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And then all the stuff we do, obviously, I, I would much rather do this than many other things, but it is hard and it takes a certain type of person and just level of perseverance to be able to do stuff. Because when you're just getting started, there's on gating, you got to deal with obviously FBA, all different um, stuff like that. And I'm curious, just in terms of like, obviously, a lot of our audience are beginners. What bit or like major like frameworks or, or takeaways you have for those that are literally just getting started? Maybe they just created their account. They're looking for those first few items. Yeah. So <clears throat> there's a couple of things that I really try to absolutely beat into people when I talk to them about Amazon. And number one is you've got to embrace the suck. Uh, it, 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 it is going to suck when it's, when you get started, you you're overwhelmed by how much information there is on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, and you're trying to drink, you know, from this fire hose uh, and also figure out, you know, what is good information, what's bad information. Uh, and so it's very overwhelming. And then maybe you go out and you want to do some retail arbitrage. Maybe you want to do some online arbitrage just to get your feet wet and not spend a lot of money. And it might take you hours or days to find that first product that you're comfortable spending five or ten dollars on to flip on Amazon. Uh, and it sucks. It's hard. It's, you know, laborious, but if you're willing to embrace that, if you're willing to fight through that suck, uh, the payoff in the long run is not only an education in entrepreneurship, but, uh, an education in what I think is a skill that we can take into many other facets of life. Arbitrage has been around not just since, you know, modern history, but we're talking back to the Sumerians and the Code of Hammurabi. Arbitrage is something that will be here forever. 
And if you can figure that out and, and understand that, okay, well, if I can buy something in one marketplace and sell it in another for more money, you now have a way to make money for the rest of your life. Uh, but you'll only get there if you embrace that suck, if you continue to kind of jump over those hurdles that seem so big at the beginning. Yeah. And there's a lot of smart people that do this and a lot of smart people that talk about it online, kind of more importantly, you can build a really good network. And obviously uh, like you have, you know, build out other tools and businesses kind of vertically integrated into the same ecosystem with Amazon. I love to hear your perspective in terms of like content, what platforms have really clicked for you, traffic sources and everything you guys have used to grow these different um, things that aren't just necessarily the physical product Amazon business. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I don't know, compared to you guys, I, I'm like an old guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so I've never, I've never been great with Instagram and I know that I'm completely sleeping on TikTok. Uh, but those are, those are some incredible platforms right now. Uh, you know, the ability to, the ability to grow a following on, especially TikTok right now is incredible. Uh, and, uh, but I also am a huge fan of YouTube. I think that YouTube is, I know it's the, you know, it's the OG of kind of the, uh, video social media space, but the ability to connect with your audience and offer long form helpful content, uh, has been one of the backbones of kind of growing, uh, you know, what I've done outside of the Amazon space, or, you know, I guess maybe next to the Amazon space. Um, and then Facebook groups, I absolutely love them. Uh, they're, you know, they're awesome as well, just because you can kind of store content and use it as a warehouse for, uh, you know, all kinds of things for people who want to learn stuff. So, uh, but if anybody is thinking about getting into the content creation space, TikTok is probably where I would focus if I were just starting. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. I, I agree. I think YouTube is one of the, I think it might be, uh, it, it's definitely made the most entrepreneurs on a, a, out of any platform on the internet. It's absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. But going back to the, to the software you created. So when you, the first one was called, what was the name of uh, Rev? Rev ROI. Rev yeah. ROI. Mm-hmm what was kind of your, like your mindset? So you were selling on Amazon and you just saw there was like a, like kind of like a gap in the market to make a software like that. What was your kind of mindset going into that? Well, I think the mindset of, of really any software, any product that you create is that you should probably really try to scratch your own itch. Uh, And if you, if you have a problem, it's likely that other people also have a similar or the same problem. And so what we were doing is we were transitioning to uh, online arbitrage from retail arbitrage. And we'd have to go to um, giftcardgranny.com and we'd have to go to um, cashbackmonitor.com and all these other websites to see where we can get the best cash back, the best discount gift cards uh, to kind of, I like to call it manufacturing a return on our investment. Uh, and I was like, this, there's got to be one place that we can go to. And sure enough, there wasn't that I knew of. And so we built that. We turned it into a Chrome extension. Uh, and then when we built IP Alert, it was when IP complaints really started to come on the scene on Amazon. And uh, it was becoming something that was becoming more and more frequent. Uh, and my buddy, Nate McAllister, wrote a blog post about IP complaints and after reading it, I was like, you know, we really should turn this into a software. This should be something that we can alert sellers to in real time. And that became IP alert. So if someone wants to get into that, the software space, whether it's, you know, a major undertaking or a a Chrome extension, uh, the first place to always look is what kind of problems do you have and how can I solve that in some automated way? And that can often become a really powerful software tool. Awesome. So one part of your content that I've actually consumed way back when, when I started was your TA training. Like you have a oh, whole yeah. series of, I think you're, you did them on Tuesdays, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. We're getting ready to start those yeah. again here pretty soon. Oh, nice. Cool. Cool. So what was the origination of that? 
Where did that idea come from? Uh, well, it's really just listening to the community and, and finding out what they want. And um, yeah, I, I really, I don't ever want to come off like I, I don't care or anything like that because I actually like legit, I give, I, I care a lot about the Amazon community. I want, I want people to be successful. I want them to have every tool at their disposal. And so if you listen and ask questions, you're going to find out what people need. Uh, and with a software like Tactical Arbitrage, there is a learning curve. Uh, and, and I knew that there just needed to be something to shorten that learning curve for people. And out of that came Tactical Arbitrage Tuesdays, uh, where we go through something about Tactical Arbitrage to make sure that you can use it in a functional manner a lot faster than if you're trying to figure, out, figure it out all on your own. Uh, and you can do that with a lot of different types of content. It doesn't just have to be about software. It can be about, you know, how to take stickers off of boxes. That's surprisingly, that's actually one of the most Google searched terms is how to take stickers off boxes. Uh, and for a long time, there wasn't great content about that kind of stuff. Uh, so when you create that kind of content, you tend to you tend to bring in the people who are, are your people and, you know, help them as best as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, what, um, what's your current tech stack, stack now? Do you still use TA? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely use tactical arbitrage. It's, uh, we use it every single day. My virtual assistants use it. Uh, and we're going to be having, we're coming out with something here very shortly. Um, called VA placement where folks will be able to get a virtual assistant who is like certified quote unquote, you know, they're certified uh, where we will train them how to use things like tactical arbitrage, how to do online arbitrage and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Something like that. We had like personally talked about implementing and that's a totally a <laughs> we, service. I we, think. we literally talked about that today, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. that, that, like, of, totally. I, yeah. has a place. We've in the never market. tried any of the VA services that, you know, they say they're like pre-trained, but uh, mm -hmm. it's something I'm, I'm interested in just because if I can cut out that like two or three week learning curve for the VA teaching them, keep inventory lab, all this stuff, that'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's a promotion. Yeah, that that's yeah. cool. That you guys are are coming out with that. Um, and and ha you did mention the name of it, right? Oh, it's yeah, it's going to be called VA placement. Is okay. is what it is. Yeah, yeah, very good. And so, in terms of like we talked about a bunch of different stuff, software, Amazon wise, uh, other things as well. This is something I kind of worry about in terms of like the future of Amazon. How you see Amazon arbitrage evolving? Do you see it ever being yeah. cut out? Uh, I'm just curious your thoughts on that because that's something, you know, being that, you know, my income is directly tied to my own stuff, uh, content around it and everything. I'm curious your thoughts on the the long term of Amazon. Yeah, you know, I, I hear this question a lot and something that's kind of funny about this community is every year you hear again, oh, well, retail arbitrage is dead and, and online arbitrage is dead or this is dead. And uh Unfortunately, that's nothing new. I've been hearing that for 10 or 11 years and uh, every single year. Sure. Yeah, it's saturated. You know, Marketplace Pulse actually came out with a study showing that the U.S. marketplace is actually the least competitive of all the other marketplaces on Amazon. And so we complain about people who price or tank the price and things like that. And I know that it's a problem, but it's actually a lot better in the United States than it is in Canada or Mexico or Europe or anything like that. Uh, and there's actually a little bit more room on the Amazon marketplace for new sellers and, and growth and things like that. Um, first, arbitrage is not going to go anywhere. Uh, it, it's going to have different makeup. You know, uh, in the 80s, you were buying things from Goodwill and you're sell them, selling them at your own garage sale at a markup. Uh, and then in the late 90s, we got eBay and people were buying from garage sales and selling on Am or on eBay. And then we got Amazon. Uh, and then a lot of people say, well, is arbitrage going to die? You know, because they only want wholesale. They only want private label. Here's the thing. Amazon lives on the long tail. OK, yes, everyone goes and buys shampoo and deodorant and stuff like that. 
on Amazon. However, the real power on Amazon is the fact that you can, at three o'clock in the morning, after half a dozen beers, search for anything on Amazon and have it delivered in two days. And that kind of thing is only possible through people like us who arbitrage. Uh, you know, people who do wholesale or private label, they cannot cater to that long tail customer, which is what is going to bring people back over and over and over again to Amazon. Uh, matter of fact, there's a great book about it called The Long Tail. Uh, and it really dives deep into how that works and why it's important. Now, the future of arbitrage, is it ever going to go away? No, arbitrage will always be around. But could the marketplace ever change? Well, sure. I mean, in the late 90s, it was eBay. Uh, that was the place to be. And, and now it's Amazon. And Walmart's trying to give them a run for their money. But, you know, they are not doing a great job at it so far. Uh, you know, but it does Shopify create a marketplace in the future? It's very possible. You know, uh, I, I never think that Amazon will be the only place for us. But there will always be some form of opportunity in the arbitrage space i would imagine for as long as we're all around yeah definitely and either way like just in terms of like what we got going on right now you know content wise and everything all the communities that exist that i think are far superior to even like two or three years ago you look at the way ungating information is free these days right no one even talked about how to do it even charging stuff back in the day like two three years ago and everything oh, yeah. We all have a great opportunity to build an awesome network, you know, in the way getting to meet guys like you, other guys we brought on the podcast and everything like that. And I think people would be foolish to not take advantage of that because I literally tweeted this the other day, like sca scarcity mindset, like doesn't help anyone when you like not at all. have the opportunity to get to meet tons of people and then build other stuff off that. And you have to like listeners out there understand like there's a, a learning curve with Amazon and with anything else, like with social media, you're going to have to post into the abyss for a while right like you mm -hmm. guys can scroll back on my instagram and see it like i did i did for a while and everything but very good things come out of it so i think it's definitely something to consider um for you guys as well to do it in terms of like product categories and everything what uh what is some low-hanging fruit do you think um just category wise our viewers um should be interested in oa and just amazon in general wise sure uh you know if we want to talk about low-hanging fruit and i'll tell you what this, this has been low hanging fruit for years. All right. I just don't see people really like getting serious about it, but um, tools and home improvement. And I'm not talking about selling saws or anything like that. Okay. I'm talking about selling replacement blades and light bulbs and screws and outlet covers. All right. The markup on it is crazy when you can buy it for 79 cents or 50 cents at a place like Home Depot and people will pay, you know, five, six, seven dollars on Amazon. Uh, but people also buy it a ton. There's not a lot of profit there, you know, but if you're buying something for 50 cents and you're selling it for five or six dollars, there's enough to actually create something sustainable. It's not sexy. It's not going to make you one hundred and seventy five dollars every time you make a sale. But it's absolutely something that you can build an entire business off of. Uh, I've I've probably sold i probably sold ten thousand light bulbs on Amazon, uh, and you know people pass them up all the time. You know I'll, I'll go sourcing with somebody like in a store, and there's a whole row of light bulbs, and I'm like, hey, aren't we going to stop for a minute? And they're like, well, no, I can't I can't sell something like that. It's going to break. As long as you, you know, take the time and package it right, you're going to sell the heck out of them uh, and they, they make it to the consumer just fine. At uh, this point in your career, what is your day to day like? Uh, so my day to day now is I get up in the morning, take my son to school, and then it's probably sourcing or going through leads list for 90 minutes to two hours. After that, uh, I have content to create. I have emails to answer. Uh, I run a Discord and a Facebook group that I've got to make sure is taken care of. Uh, and then on Tuesdays and Fridays, I create new content for our, our mastermind. Uh, and, and so that's kind of what my, that's pretty much what my, my day looks like nowadays. 
Mm -hmm. And in terms of like everything going on, do you have like a, like a link tree or a, a website anyone can go to that gets like the, the master like links of all, cause I'm curious to look at it as well. Oh, you know, uh, that's something I've not been good at, like, you know, setting up a link tree or anything, but uh, I've got two websites. One is clear the shelf.com. Uh, and the other one is oachallenge.com. Those are the two places to pretty much find everything out about, about us. Cool. Fantastic. All right. One question I'm excited to hear your answer about um, just over the years. Let's hear the best flip of all time. It could be ROI on one item. I made 700 bucks on one, I one item in one sale, or it could be volume of a certain item. Let's hear one of the best licks you've ever had. Okay. I've got two for you. Okay. So probably the best ROI was a coffee table book that I purchased used from a Goodwill store uh, for a dollar. Uh, and it was massive. I mean, it was 24 inches by 24 inch coffee table book of um, like Frank Lloyd Wright homes. I bought it for a dollar and I sold it for four hundred and twenty five dollars. Uh, so the, I mean, the ROI is incalcul incalculable there. Uh, one of my favorite flips though, was actually probably, um, water coolers, like office water coolers that, you know, you go and talk around or whatever. Uh, I bought seven or eight of them from a Kroger grocery store for $49, uh, and couldn't figure out what to do them. They were sitting in my basement for a couple of weeks. Uh, I screwed up my merchant fulfilled template. Uh, and then finally my wife was like, listen, can you get these out of the basement? Like this is ridiculous. So I take the time to actually package these things up, send them into Amazon. And sure enough, the minute they go live FBA, all four or five of them sold for like 379 bucks a pop. Uh, you know, and the learning curve there of like Frank unboxing things, uh, and stuff like that was, was a lot of fun. Uh, and then of course, seeing it sell from, you know, sitting for uh, forever was, was also really nice. Sweet. That's awesome. When, uh, when you first got into Amazon and like doing online arbitrage and just like flipping things in general, what was kind of the response from your family when like you said, all right, I'm going to take these six months to either make it work or not, uh, just flipping stuff online. What, what was kind of their response to that? So my family, the family business that I worked in was, uh, was actually for my grandfather. He'd been an, he'd been an insurance agent for 40 some years before I was old enough to sell insurance myself. And when I told him, uh, one, he was disappointed, but then when it was time for me to leave and I said, Hey, all right, this is, this is it. I'm, I'm out of here for at least six months. Uh, you know, and I said, I won't, I won't come begging for a job or anything. And he was like, yes, you will. I'll see you in six months. Uh, and that's kind of what everybody thought, you know, six months, you're going to be back doing something, uh, because it's not going to work out. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, and that's typical. You're going to find that really in any family or friend group. They're going to be very, very, uh, worried about you. Uh, you know, so don't let that get you down. Do you have any advice for people where like they might be trying to start it or they're, or they're doing it and their family and friends just keep telling them or, or keep saying to them how bad of an idea they think it is? Uh, you know, I mean, I hate to be cliche, but you really just got to block the haters sometimes. Uh, you know, try to, so here's one of the things I don't really talk about Amazon with very much of even my own family. Okay. Uh, and every now and again, they'll be like, Oh, Hey, I saw a video on YouTube and you were on there. I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, that's, that's something I do sometimes. Uh, and, uh, so I don't really like talk about, it. I don't let them know, uh, because they're, they're like, that doesn't make sense. You know, are you stealing from people? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So you just, you know, put your head down, do the work, uh, go out and network with people who are like-minded. There are plenty of us out there, you know, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, go to TikTok, wherever you hang out. There are people who are like you find your tribe, uh, you know, stick out your hand, uh, say hello, and you're going to find the people who back you up and think what you're doing is great. And, uh, and want to, you know, want to see you grow and succeed. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And uh buy box bandit free discord LinkedIn, uh LinkedIn description. Y'all go, y'all Ooh. go check that out. Any light anyone, plug, light plug. Anyone listening. Yeah. But uh Garrett, I know you had a question. So out of the, the Amazon business, the software, the content, the future VA business, is there something that you're most proud of or a project that you're most proud of? Uh yeah, our OA challenge is probably the thing I'm absolutely most proud of. Um, and the only reason is, and I know this, this is going to sound corny and cliche and I get it. Uh, but now I actually get emails from people being like, Oh, Hey, you know what? You like absolutely changed the course of our business. Or, you know, I actually figured out how to, uh, you know, sell on Amazon because of this. Uh, and I don't know, I, that's almost, that gives you a, a serious high when someone is like, thank you for, you know, changing the course of how we do business. Um, and so that has probably been the thing that's made me most proud so far. Sweet. Yeah. I, we would and- definitely agree. Sometimes we get, I, and I, I know specifically we got a DM one time on the buy box bandits account. I think someone said through like the podcast or just our videos or miles videos, he was able to like pay off his car. Like it was just, those things are just uh i mean amazing because we really we really didn't think any none of these videos would kind of go anywhere but uh it's sure. awesome that they are and they're able to help at least one person it's sweet yeah. Oh, yeah definitely and same with you know all you got going on i mean i'm sure that's doing a lot of, clearly it is doing a lot of good things for everyone so very uh commend you on that one thing i'm curious about <laughs> uh, any favorite business books or just books in general uh one of the One book that everyone should read is uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It is pro. It it may be the best book of all time. Yeah, I've read it. I've read it as well. Yeah, I I actually (laughs) am looking at it. I think over it in my room. That's um, definitely a good one as well. Um, So, Chris, you have a lot of different like kind of businesses and avenues going on. From what it sounds like. What keeps you motivated, whether that's on the, the day-to-day or just in general? What keeps you going to keep running all of these? Oh, sure. Uh, so you really do need to have a strong why uh, because it's easy to, you know, it's easy to get knocked down and not want to get back up. Uh, my why is pretty easy. I've got, I've got a son. I've got a wife. Uh, I want to make sure that they don't ever have to, uh, you know, have the kind of situation that I had as a kid. We, I was, I was broke as a kid. Uh, and I don't ever, I don't want my family to have to go through that, uh, or anything. And so, uh, that kind of becomes my North star. I, you know, make sure that I get up, I work hard, uh, make good decisions, do the right thing, uh, just to make sure that my family keeps a roof over their head and has everything they might need or want. Uh, and it's, it was very easy for me. Uh, that kind of why is not going to be for everyone else. You know, maybe they don't have kids maybe they don't, you know, aren't married. Uh, but there is some why, you know, maybe it's, you want to take care of your mom. Maybe it's, you want to, uh, you know, be able to help your brother, whatever it is, uh, but find that why in your business that's more powerful than any setbacks or, uh, or things that knock you down. Uh, and once you figure that out, you will pretty much be unstoppable with a little bit of knowledge. Gotcha. What are your long-term business goals in terms of like, let's say two, three, five years, all that. Cause the way we think about like a, an arbitrage business isn't necessarily sellable. You know what I mean? Some of the other yeah. stuff like software and everything, you, there is the potential for a liquidity event and all that just down the line. Like, are you just going to enjoy the cash flow of the different stuff you got on? Uh, do you have a goal of an exit at some point or, uh, you know, I, you might even not be comfortable sharing that. I'm just, I'm just curious in terms of what you plan on the next few years looking like. Oh, sure. Uh, I am, I am getting into private label. I'm, I'm learning oh, about nice. private label. Cool. So, okay. so uh, yeah, I, I don't just teach. I, I, I eat my own, I eat my own cooking. So I spend money on courses and, and, you know, learn how to try to be better. And so I know that arbitrage is not necessarily something that is saleable long-term. There are some ways to make it happen, uh, you know, but uh, you need to either have a brand or you need to have, you know, some sort of uh, wholesale business for something to, to be able to have a liquidity event, like you talked about. Uh, So, Private label is probably something that we're going to pursue. 
software wise, I would be open to an acquisition. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually at a conference about software this weekend to kind of become a better software developer and owner. Uh, and so I would definitely sell software in the future uh, and maybe even create something that's a little bit larger than what I have now. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I kind of fly, fly from the seat of my pants for, for most of uh, my business. And while that's not necessarily the smartest business plan, it's worked out so far. Oh, yeah. And we all, kind, everyone's kind of like that, I think. You know, everyone's just trying yeah. to figure it out <laughs> from yeah. what I've learned thus far. Do you have a background in software development, like a computer science degree or something? Oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag. Uh, yeah, gun, gun to my head. I couldn't, I couldn't write even probably two or three lines of HTML code for you. Uh, no, what I do have is I have the knack of finding people who are talented, uh, to develop things for me. Uh, but they're not necessarily people who are interested in selling their own software. Matter of fact, this is, so this is something is a lot of people want to keep their ideas really close to their vest and not tell anybody. Uh, but everyone has a much different skill set. Usually you guys are great on video. You guys may or may not be able to code. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all right on video. Uh, I have a face for radio, but I can't code. All right. Uh, so I found someone who can, and then I'm actually pretty good at coming up with the idea and then selling it, uh, you know, to people that it's useful for. Uh, so if you don't have the skill set, most skill sets are hireable. You have yeah, a go to. Your... Oh, oh my bad. Are your devs in house or like VAs and such? No, uh, I wouldn't call them virtual assistants uh, because they've been with me for years. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Yeah, I, like I've had I've had one developer ever since I built my first Chrome extension. Uh, so he's more like a, a good friend now. Uh, but he is from India. Uh, and then we have another fellow. Uh, he's not in-house. He's in another country as well. Uh, and uh, he helps us also. Um, but yeah, no, not, nobody in-house. I, I've thought about going and like hiring a, a local college kid at, you know, University of Central Florida and seeing about building out something much larger scale. Uh, but then I have to manage people and, and I, that's not one of my strong suits. So I haven't done that. Mm hmm. Do you have any tips for uh, anyone looking to hire, whether that's, you know, like hire fast, fire fast or hire slow, fire? Do you have any tips around that? Yeah, hire slow for sure. Uh, and I would even I would even set up some obstacles and you can pay people for that. I'm not saying try to take advantage of someone's mm -hmm. time. Right. Uh, you know, but a lot of people can look really good in an interview, but then they may not really know anything on the back end. So. I always try to give people a few tasks to complete that I will pay them for. And if they can complete those tasks properly, whether it's, you know, I don't know, you know, build me a, a two line code uh, that, you know, does whatever, or you go and find me a product on, on Walmart that matches on Amazon. If you're hiring for a virtual assistant, it doesn't have to be hard, pay them for it, make sure they understand your directions and can follow them. Uh, and then go on to the next part, which might be you training them and what you want to do or, or things like that. And that way you're not wasting your time with somebody who doesn't have the skill set you're looking for. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. So I think um, if uh, you could let us know where our audience can find you on social media and we'll finish up here. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I would imagine most of your folks are going to be on Instagram. I'm cl at clear the shelf on Instagram. Uh, and uh, Chris Grant on on YouTube, and that's really about it. I don't have a huge social media presence across TikTok or or anything. And did did you say you had a Facebook group as well? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I I co run uh, I co run FBA today. FBA today, fantastic. All right, cool. Well, we really appreciate that. Was a really wide ranging episode because you you got a lot of stuff going on, and we appreciate you coming on and chopping up with us for a little bit today. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. I'm sorry that, you know, I'm in a truck uh, <laughs> in, right. in the middle of Florida. Uh, but yeah, thanks for having me guys. I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you taking the time.
Absolutely. Thanks, yep. And thanks to, yeah, thanks to all our listeners, watchers on YouTube as well. Make sure if you guys haven't already, YouTube watchers, we all got the merch on. I, I assume Danny has it on as well. We can see Garrett's. I don't know why Danny isn't showing it. Okay, he's showing it now. <laughs> yeah, make sure you join the Discord. Um, linked in the description. We'll be doing uh, more giveaways of that as well. But we'll see you guys on Tuesday for the next episode. Thanks a lot.